Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part two of the Q&A. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. And I'm going to briefly summarize the most important part of this question. He's someone who detrains, come back to building it back up. Um, and we'll just keep it short. Got back to lifting three weeks ago, doing heavy triples because my work capacity is crap. Goal is only to get back to at least 400 in the squat, 200 in the press while losing some fat. I also found overhead movements with a bar don't bother me, dumbbells do, and I had to switch from close grip to wide grip bench, reduce range of motion. However, I feel discomfort and some pain in my palms and wrists once I try to bench over 200 or press over 160. This goes away with wrist wraps, and I'm able to improve 20 pounds. I would love it to be able to dish them. Do you have any recommendations? Um, my recommendations, brother, are don't dish the wrist wraps. There are people out there who have really thick wrists, very strong wrists naturally. They can do heavy pressing. They can do heavy pressing without wrist straps. I am not one of them. I'm not one of them. I've measured my wrist. I don't have particularly big wrists. I have pretty long forearms. I don't have big wrist bones. The bones are thin in my, my forearms actually, relative to the rest of my frame. Um, and anyone who doesn't have big, thick wrists usually you're going to find wrist straps are going to help you. They're going to help you with inflammation. They're going to help you with being more stable. And if they do, it's a good idea to use them. It's going to reduce your overall discomfort. It's going to increase your ability to train. Because what you don't want to have happen is, is develop a lot of inflammation in your wrist uh, from overuse, not having stability there and everything else. It's going to interfere with your recovery. It's going to interfere with your life. It's going to interfere with your training for no reason. Wrist straps are not expensive and they're a normal part of lifting. And, and it's just one of those things that is of benefit to us. It's not like knee wraps to where the knee wraps can damage your knees in theory over time. Wrist straps help reduce uh, developing long-term inflammation problems. It creates stability. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So don't, don't worry about dishing them. Keep them. Keep them. Because if you're one of those guys who just have those big, thick wrists who can do that, you will have always had them. I have a client right now who's like that. He benches over 300 without wrist straps, has never felt any wrist pain in his entire life training in the years and years he's been lifting. Never had any problems, but he's got big, thick wrist bones. Okay? He never developed an issue, therefore he never needed them. It's not true for most people. You're, just, you're, you're like the rest of us there. Wear the wrist straps, you'll be better off for it. All right, next question. Hey, Jason, currently preparing a makeshift home gym setup in the event of my local gym closing its doors. Was wondering if dumbbell squats are really any use for maintaining quad strength as I do not own a squat rack. Um, if not anything you would recommend instead. Cheers. Well, depends on how strong you are, right? I mean, you have to think in terms of, of relative strength here. How strong are your quads? How heavy a dumbbells do you have? All right, if you're if you're a guy who only squats, all right, if you're a guy whose max squat is 200 pounds and you have a pair of 50 pound dumbbells, clean those up and work with them. All right, clean those up and work with them. You do high reps, you'll be fine. In theory. But here's what I would say. All right. Assuming you're stronger than that. Why don't you do one-legged exercises? We have isolateral movements. Look at what I just showed you guys for the step-ups with the dumbbells. Watch the video. Watch the leg video for no weights. And I also showed you you could do that with dumbbells. Step-ups with dumbbells will maintain your quads. They'll grow your quads. Okay, let me put it to you this way. Your squat may not go up because you may not be able to build all the muscles of the squat with what you have there. Right? But you could build your quads, and if your quads get bigger while you're waiting to get a rack, and you build everything else up with deadlifts and hip hinges and all that, your squat will go up. So do step ups. Do step ups, you'll be fine. Uh, what about lunges? Walking lunges. Uh, by the way, I have clients, some clients right now, in this same situation. All right, they're in the same situation. We make do. Now, here's what you can do. You could do step-ups until your quads are fatigued. 
then you could clean some heavy, the heaviest dumbbells up that you have and do squats. You'll at least get some of the movement pattern training. And you'll be fatigued enough there'll be some carryover. That's an option, isn't it? You have other options. All right. If you can deadlift, even better. If you got a box, you can box squat too. Because remember, box squats, box squats are harder than a regular squat. If you can box squat, okay, you can even do speed squats. If you got dumbbells you can clean up and you have a box to sit on, you could do speed squats. Those work with very lightweight. You have to hold on to those dumbbells tight. So what are our options here? You isolateral movements. Right, one leg at a time. It could be step ups, because assuming you got a bench, kind of what you're describing, you didn't say lack of a bench, you still have a squat rack. Step ups, failing that, walking lunges with the dumbbells. Then you could do stuff like some box squats after. But like I said, we could also do speed boxes. Do speed boxes, then speed pulls. All right, then do your one-legged exercises and then maybe even have to throw in some Romanian deadlifts and four people say don't you prefer good mornings yeah but you can't get a bar up there he's not in a good situation to do good mornings we work with what we have all right that would work that would work for you give that all a try all right next question if someone had a max barbell high bar squat of 500 just to keep it at a round number. What do you think the max barbell bench hip thrust should be? Well, I don't think you should max out on a hip thrust. And other people said that actually in the replies to him. Why would you max out on a hip thrust? This is really a hypertrophy movement. It's not intended to test your wonder at max on. Are, are you entering the, the hip thrust lifting federation or something? Okay, you don't need to test your max on a hip thrust. So let's come over to rep work. And you can extrapolate this, of course. All right, look at mine. Uh, when I was hit at my 552 squat, I had 455 for five sets of 10 on the hip thrust. Okay. Now, that's off of an 18-inch bench. The lower the bench goes, the heavier your hip thrust should be by a small amount. So, using that sort of basic math, could you assume... Could you assume that a 500 pound squatter should be able to hip thrust approximately 400 pounds for sets of 10? I think that's perfectly reasonable. I think that's very perfectly reasonable. Right? It's reasonable indeed. You could extrapolate that. Uh, I used to do this with my clients on glute bridges. When I have a client who has really, really weak glutes. I make them do glute bridges. And you know what I invariably find? That as their glutes get strong enough for their deadlift to start going up, do you know what I find? I find that their 10 rep sets on their glute bridges are approximately 85%. They're approximately 85% of their max conventional deadlift. Some cases closer to 80, but somewhere between 80 and 85 Okay, that's, that's your target. So if you're dealing with a, a hip thrust and you want to use the hip thrust to increase your squat because you think it's addressing your weak links, well, let's look at the math that I just did, about 80%. It's about 80%. Now, people say, why would you compare and use the hip thrust versus the glute bridge for those lifts? Because the hip thrust uses more quad than the glute bridge, and it's a shorter range of motion. And we can lift heavier weight on the glute bridge, right? So it is closer related to the deadlift, while the hip thrust would be closer related to the squat in terms of just assessing carryover. Do the same sort of math, about 80%. So if you should look at it a different way, you should be looking at these supplemental lifts to increase your big lifts. If you think the hip thrust will address your weak links in your squat, then your goal should be to get to 80% of your target squat for sets of 10. That's what I would recommend. 
right? We're looking at this the wrong way. How much should you be able to do versus how much do you need to do to reach your goals? People get it asked backwards. We do supplemental lifts to build muscle to get stronger. Set your goals accordingly. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.